We're delighted to have Ben Parry-Smith of um, Payne Hicks Beach, solicitor specialising in divorce, a very busy man post-COVID. Ben, do you want to tell us about what you'll be speaking about at the conference? Yeah, morning, morning, Mark. Um, what I'm going to speak about is really how, as an expert, to avoid ending up on the wrong side of a headline. So there's quite a few cases where experts get slammed by the judges, and you don't want to be that person. So you might make a lot of money out of the case, but never work again. And that's what I'm keen to try and help everyone avoid. So Ben, what is the relevance of you as a divorce lawyer and the relationship between a solicitor and the expert witness? Well, as a divorce lawyer, I deal with a lot of different experts. On the financial side, we have valuations for property, for big companies, and we sometimes have handwriting experts and forensic accountants. And on the children's side, we have medical experts, psychiatric evidence. I hope I bring to the, to the conference an understanding of how to get the best out of your relationship between solicitor and expert. Uh, and it's not unlike a marriage, you have to give and take, you have to have integrity. And if you, if you have integrity and you follow the rules, you should be able to have a long and successful career as an expert. And if you get it wrong, you can end up publicly shamed and disinstructed. So I'm going to try and help everyone stay on the straight and narrow. For the uh, medical legal experts coming to the conference, I'm delighted that uh, Dr. Jock McKenzie is again speaking. He's been an ever popular speaker. Jock, what are you going to be talking about and why is it important? Well, it's a clinical negligence update, really of the main important cases over the last year or so, covering things like scope of duty of care, breach of duty, causation, some Montgomery cases. Um, these are all important cases, mainly high court cases, that it is really vital for experts to understand and to know about so that they're fully up to date. It's really important for experts to be up to date because, of course, their opinions are critical to the cases and whichever party they're acting for or have been instructed by, and um, it adds necessary credibility to those opinions. So, of course, an up-to-date expert who knows all the latest cases and who understands uh, both the law and the medicine, as it currently is at the time you know, of the particular case, is likely to be preferred by a judge to an expert that is obviously out of date and who doesn't keep up to date and who isn't fully au fait with the, the law and the medicine. Our next speaker is Wendy Miles QC of 20 Essex Chambers. Wendy, can you Tell us what you'll be speaking about at the Von Solon Expert Witness Conference. Thank you so much, Mark. What I would like to focus on is in the context of commercial dispute resolution, litigation and arbitration, focus on how to ensure that the expert becomes the trusted advisor to the decision maker. How to make sure that the expert who is testifying becomes the person that helps the decision maker unravel those technical issues within that individual's realm of expertise, because that's the place you want to get with the decision maker, that they trust you, they trust your explanation of the difficult issues, and they're looking to you to help them come to their decision. A very important speaker for the conference is Helen Swaffield, who's a barrister, extremely experienced in contract law. In fact, she's head of contract law chambers and Bonsola has instructed her to prepare terms and conditions suggestible, suggested for expert witnesses and the solicitors. Helen, why are terms and conditions so important for expert witnesses? Well, they are, Mark, because as your conference delegates will know, uh, if you don't have a contract which enables you to get paid, which enables you to manage the deadlines of the work, to manage any difficulties with the work to oversee the relationship with the subject matter and with the solicitor as well, then, then you can easily run into some difficulties. So there are lots of good reasons to have a contract managing that relationship uh, between you and the instructing solicitor. Now, a lot of experts obviously are not solicitors and they don't understand the, the terms of the contract. Are you going to help them to understand what's in that contract? Yes, well, we hope to. We, as you say, we're working on um, a draft template that 
delegates will be able to use and maybe adapt to their particular circumstances because we have a wide range of experts who will be coming to the conference. But certainly there's a lot of jargon to think about in a contract. And so part of the session will be to decode some of those words that may not mean very much. But also, I think, to try and highlight some of the most important parts of that agreement. Another one of our speakers is Dr. Marion Palmer who's a scientist and works at home levels. This is an international law firm with a massive practice. And she and others have set up a specialist science unit within Hogan levels. Marion, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Certainly, Mark. Um, so uh, I'm one of the founder members of the Hogan Level Science Unit, which started, um, gosh, over 20 years ago now. And essentially we, help with any matter with a significant scientific content. So this can range from analyzing in-house data to providing a review of the state of art in relation to a particular device or treatment or finding expert witnesses for a very wide range of um, cases. The um, expert exercise usually starts when uh, the claim first comes in, we'll be involved in reviewing that drawing up a list of potentially suitable candidates, interviewing them, and then often having the privilege of working with them right up until the time of trial. 